Hello, my name is Moonkath and welcome back to another episode of my series on the new world. In this series, as I'm sure you know by now, my main goal, my end goal, is to get as many high age units as possible, all the way up to oceanic future units in the industrial age. Last week I did a lot of fighting on the continent map and that was a lot of fun. This week I didn't do too much there, I did do some, uh, but the main thing I did this week was that I finally made the move to late middle ages. So I made the move and was able to prepare for the winter event which is coming up quite soon. Let's start off by looking at day one. Here I started off the day by reaching the Diamond League in the PvP arena. Really happy with that, though I'm not quite strong enough yet to get to the Crystal League, the final league. Later on in the day I did my recurring quests as usual, and well, that's about it from day one. Perhaps I was exhausted of last week, but I didn't really do much on day number one. Day two, I started off by finally completing my third run of the Viking Settlement, this time I also had plenty of time to spare, almost four days. Uh, and I'm not really doing anything special. Uh, I often run four or eight hour coin productions and regular goods productions, so yeah, I'm finding them surprisingly easy, to be honest. And one questions I, question I've had is why did I go for Vikings instead of Egypt, for example? And even though Egypt would have been a more fun experience to play, uh, I do, at this stage, prefer the attack boost over the units. The units definitely would have come in handy, but eventually, as I get these higher age units, I'll be using those, and then the current age units I produce through the Royal Bathhouse wouldn't be that useful. Anyways, a bit later on in the day, I continued on the continent map in order to complete my daily challenge, taking down the four last sectors of Seldon on Sea. And that's about it from day two, so day three was again quite an uneventful day. Pretty much all I did outside of collecting PvP, GPG and so on was completing the daily challenge, getting my first piece of the cherry set. People who know me know that I love this set. In higher ages it's alright but not amazing, 
But in lower ages, it's truly one of the best uh, attack sets out there because the attack doesn't scale with age, which means that in lower ages, it's as powerful as in higher ages, and compared to other options, it's very nice in lower ages. And as I'm going to be sticking in uh, industrial age, I do want to get quite a big cherry set eventually. Anyways, that's it for day three. Day four was quite eventful. After GBG had started, I finally made the move to late middle ages. This way I could have a complete guild battleground season fighting with LMA units against high middle ages units. So this way I should have a really easy time fighting in guild battlegrounds this time getting a lot of nice rewards. So after I moved up, I did some questing, including getting 35 diamonds from this story quest. I then started doing some reconstruction work, adding a couple of basalt goods buildings. Uh, my plan is to focus quite heavily on those because I think they'll be easy to trade and it'll make it easier to advance in the tech tree later on. I then ended the day by taking the first North Castle sector partly because I wanted to complete this side quest to gather supplies, but also because I wanted to continue on the bonus map. It ended up being quite hard to defeat, but I only lost attached units, so no problem with that. Day 5, I continued on the continent map to gather supplies, first taking another two North Castle sectors. The next fight in North Castle seemed quite hard, so I decided to do a Narcien sector instead, using a combo of heavy and rogues against the Lancers, which worked very well. This was enough to complete the side quest for 33 Basalt. I then continued doing some more side quests, which got me even more goods, and I also decided to sell some alchemists. Now that I'm no longer in HMA, I can't use them for recurring quests, so I'd rather use some of that space for more goods buildings. Speaking of more goods buildings, I then did something I probably should have done yesterday. I used the reconstruction tool to rebuild my city, so that I could squeeze in some more goods buildings. Later on in the day, I continued on the continent map, partly for the daily challenge, but also because I wanted to progress on the maps, so I started with two Queen's Hope sectors. After that, I switched back to North Castle, taking down the final three sectors.
With those fights completed, I finished the daily challenge, getting two blueprints for the CDM. I also got yet another blueprint a few minutes later from the guild expedition, so I'm getting close to having all the CDM blueprints I need. And that's definitely a building I'll be building soon, completing the holy trinity of attack great buildings. And that's about it for day 5, so day 6 started with some more progress on the technologies, and I did some more story and side quests, but nothing too exciting. I got a few more expansions, and I used a trick that I should have mentioned, if you at any point need to recruit some units of any age, you can very easily and quickly do that in the spare fighter barracks. Day 7 started with completing the rebuild, getting my final basalt building, for now at least. I then completed a daily challenge as well as another 7 day chest and got a nice shrine of knowledge that I can sell to the index dealer. Then through the rest of the day I got a ton of diamonds. I got 20 diamonds twice from recurring quests, I got 100 diamonds as the rewards from the final level 3 chest in the guild expedition, and I got diamonds from two of the chests in the guild expedition level 4. And finally, I also got 40 diamonds from yet another story quest. In total, ended up getting 255 diamonds this day. I also completed the guild expedition level 4, got a fountain of youth here, which will also go right to the antiques dealer. I ended off the day by getting the second recurring quest, as I mentioned last week, you actually get the second recurring quest right before the bonus map in LMA. You get it by reaching this story quest here, and as long as you don't complete it, you get to keep the second recurring quest. If you complete this story quest, however, you immediately start on the bonus quest instead, and for those curious, you do need to be in LMA to get the second recurring quest slot, as a previous quest requires you to build a tower ruin, which is an LMA building. Now at the time of recording this video, I have completed the bonus map and the bonus quest line uh, on my world, and for those who don't know, by doing so, you're able to get some very nice colonial age units in late middle ages. These units are really nice to fight with. You can get five grenadiers, and you can get two field guns. Both of these are very nice to fight with. So I will be making a dedicated video that should hopefully come out quite soon. So check the description if it's out already. And in that video, I will be going over in detail how you can get all of those units uh, through the LMA bonus questline and what requirements, what technologies and so on, what everything you need to know about how to get those. So stay tuned for that video. It should come out quite soon. With that, I will end this video by thanking my Patreons. Thank you very much to Homestar, Merrick B, PQ the Goat, Artler, Sabathiel, Hugo Count von Count, Jan Fredriksen, Judith Generous, Filda, Rocco, Henrik de Reclerber, and Mattia. Thank you all very much for your support. Thanks for watching. Take care, and I will see you in the future.